let's get on to our next section now. Our next guest is the founder and CEO of Payments Unicorn Paytm. And his story and that of Paytm's really echoes India's rise. And it's leapfrog or even catapult from an analog world to a digital one. He's raised money from Berkshire Hathaway, from SoftBank, from Alibaba. And his experience, both leading a private company and now a public company, is revealing. We're going to talk about his journey uh, as an entrepreneur, a CEO, and now an investor. So please do welcome to the stage Vijay Shekhar Sharma. Thank you. How are you? Well, come on down. Welcome. Wow. How's the, it going? The, the last... Uh, comment made by... What uh, do you think uh, about that? I, I, I think uh, the large digital monopolies are here to be sorted out by the emerging nations, else we will never come up to the occasion and rise up to the occasion. Mm. I'm very proud to say this, that as India, we have come up to the terms that there is an obligation to use the technology built by big ones, but there is also not an obligation to give in to that. So. What do, you think they sh what do you think a country like India should do as a result of that? Should you create um, your own Google? What should you do? No, this is, this is, you don't require the same thing to be built by another, your domestic player. Instead, give that what has been built. Let's say if we are taking, let's say, large Western, Eastern, by the way, big companies can come from anywhere. Mm. So whatever they have built should be made available equally and without favor or without... Uh, somebody's restriction, and then on top of it, what you build. So the governments, I think a few minutes back, I remember there was a, a closed room meeting. The government should bring the big tech in the country to say that you are welcome in this country and you are supposed to support this country. Mm. You're not just going to take the fruits and the money of this country and treat us like a market, but support us and innovate in this country and then let us build something on this market. Mm. I think India is a model. The classic model, sir, talked about digital public infrastructure is actually the best model because commercial organizations, in my opinion, one or other day, whosoever leads on the top could go not necessarily in the correct direction as a country's good goes. Hmm. So DPI infrastructure. Yay. <laughs> India model. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're going to make sure we get the audience involved here in this one. So if we've got some questions from our esteemed colleagues here, please do get them ready. Can I say so one more thing? The, the, the audiences are in very, very cool space, like temperature wise. This is pretty warm here. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, let's start with some, some recent good news for you. Um, analysts last month I saw, saw were making very positive noises. Jeffries says, expects you'll soon turn a profit. Uh, Paytm should rank among the world's most profitable fintech firms. And I should say, Paytm started originally as 197 in mm -hmm. uh, a phone directory, 2001. Ten years later, Paytm. Yep. 2011, you listed in 2021. So it sounds like only every once a decade, big changes. Yeah, uh, now five years. Because I think 2025 will not be the same as 2021. Okay. Hashtag AI. <laughs> okay. Uh, largest digital bank in India, largest FinTech. Goldman Sachs has said you're on the right side of disruption, dominant payments platform, a head start in these digital credit products. So. What are you going to do to keep the analysts happy? What do you got uh, planned? First of all, I don't have to keep analysts happy. I have to keep my customers happy and my country proud of us. That's the rule number one. And the sequencing is country, community, company, individual. No, no secret about it. Investors will get their due any which ways. In my opinion, investors get the dividend, which is the hard work of the people and the people whom you serve. So I, in that sequencing, I'm not going to say that I set it for uh, any analyst. But that said, um, it is an opportunity to be in India. I go elsewhere, I come here, I go Western countries, and I think India is a place. The, the Utopian statement, the American dream, I bet in 10 years people will say the great Indian dream and where were you at that time when it was mm. happening. And I think this is happening as we speak right now in mm. India. Interesting. So, uh, not so good news, however. Uh, Paytm shares ha have almost doubled this year, still down more than 50% yeah. from a $2.5 billion IPO in 2021. So why are the shares still down? Um, that's where the analyst needs to answer this, <laughs> not me. <laughs> but at the same point in time, I, I'll say that, that the, the world went through a free money r r ride, if you will, and the amount of free money that 
you know, practically United States printed and sequentially went to the rest of the world. So in private markets, even in now in the private markets in India, the valuations have not got sorted out where it could have sorted out. Mm. But the same way, when we were private, we raised money at 20 billion dollar valuation. I mean, that was not small. So mm. things like that happen. But in a public market, I'd rather say you're truly, uh, it goes through a far better balanced approach mm. than in a private market. Yes, it is uncomfortable for us that we are not same, but at the same point in time, I understand that public markets take time to understand the company. Remember, public market is like uh, the gathering here. Each one of you need to understand the business. In private market, you literally in front of a table can explain people the business. Mm. So it may take some time, but we are there. We are definitely there. We are definitely there. So. Well, just on that, though, what lessons can you share with other founders who might be in the room about, about when you plan an IPO? You plan an IPO when your business potential sort of has got discovered. You know what your business model will be, and you have profits or your profits are in sight. I'm not necessarily going to say that you should be profitable day one or when you're going in public, but I must say that it should not be very, very far away mm -hmm. uh, because public markets, like we're just now talking about, are going through a phase. In fact, investment is going through a phase. The 2010s to 20 was free money run, if you will, because of the practically US printing dollars for mm. free. And now the interest rates in US itself is going to see tons of bankruptcies in US, tons of domino effects are happening in the rest of the world. So I'm not sure whether next five years the market is going to get better than, I mean, we may think that it is because of some war, war A, war B, or some other reason. In my opinion, it is a fundamental shift that has come, that there is a interest hike that has going to cost. So if you are in a public market, you should be conscious about that you may not get the multiples that you used to get in private, mm. and you rather want to be far more stronger on your business model than you could have been in earlier days. So let's talk about your outlook for what you think for the next couple of years. When mm. I was uh, in Saudi Arabia at FII, listening to the head of Goldman Sachs, the CEO of, uh, CEOs of, of Citi, BlackRock, Blackstone, Macquarie Bank, they were all sounding pretty grim about the general economic outlook for, for the world. War in Ukraine, conflict in Gaza, Israel, adding real notes of caution in terms of risk taking. Yep, that's what's, right. your, what's your take? So I, I look at it from a technology entrepreneur's head. So we need risk capital and then we need uh, growth capital. So risk capital is what is available to open AI and chat GPT. Companies are crazy valued. Even right now, if you are a good AI startup, a couple of hundred million is out there waiting for you. Because just like everything happens uh, in terms of late market, the innovation market still thrives on. Mm. So in other words, if you build another fintech or another commerce company, maybe you may not get the same valuation or a same money that you could have raised amount. But if you are talking about AI and you have a genuine in inven invention out there, there is a risk appetite and capital there. But later stage companies, what you said just now, I totally believe, the world is going through a high interest rate. And imagine high interest rate is not a high, small high interest. This is like mm. six or seven percent, depending on which country are we talking about. That I think has a very big global effect. You know, uh, the biggest expenditure for US, every one of us thinks is defense. Mm. For the first time, US will pay more interest on a debt that it has taken than the defense. So you can understand, instead of defense industry, the financial industry is bigger, even for mm -hmm. if you were serving United States of government, US government. So in other words, the access to capital is definitely, if we did not have COVID effect on the world in health sense at a dramatic potential that it could have had, we definitely have it on financial world. And that domino is going to long, go long, long. OK. Let's talk about competition. Now, you have thrived in India. You're also thriving in Japan as well, where you've built a, uh, a really interesting business there. Amazon, Walmart now building competing financial services across India. You've got geo financial services entry into the market. Tell me how corporate competition sharpens your focus. Uh, only one thing I'm going to say is that if you are a young, focused enterprise company, startup that you want to say, you must not, f f you must not fear the big guy till the time period it is the primary attention of the big guy. So I, I have fundamental belief that American companies, or so th for that matter, now maybe the Indian companies also, we could take that up, that a founder-led 
international companies who have access to the capital are one to be fought. If you're talking about management-led companies, there is a timeline that these companies stop giving the budget to a exotic Indian project or any geographic India, you could replace that. Mm. So, till that, because in the end, the US economy is pretty huge and all these emerging economies, like we just now a few minutes were talking about dirty energy and whatnot thing, ultimately do not make the dent in their needle moving revenues. So, competition has to be fought like a, a clear understanding that your big guy is not going to beat you because they have their own challenges. Mm. And when we are small, we do think that what if, if, what if scenario, what if this, what if that. I think it's clear that they are not doing it and they would not be able to do it. And if money is the answer to your problem, you've not found the answer to your problem yet. I am a firm believer of that. So we've got some folks who I know have got some questions. We're an equal opportunity uh, conference here. We're going to bring in somebody virtually, uh, Hansel, who's the CEO and founder of Weevil Company. Uh, he's, I think he's in London, but his originally company is from Nigeria. So, Hansel, give us your give us your question. Oh, okay. Thank you, everyone. And firstly, I would like to commend the Indian Global Forum for such initiative for founders like us to have access to global management and. Um, big entrepreneurs and uh, companies that are being owned by top global tech companies like PTM. So my question to you, sir, is um, are there any specific initiatives within PTM aimed at reaching underserved markets or to drive financial inclusion on a global scale? Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you again. I also should thank India Global Forum for bringing us all together. Uh, I think financial inclusion is a problem of their own country. It's not a problem that somebody else from outside can solve. It is a problem of a regulator or a government in the country. It takes a resolve of a government, it takes a resolve of people there to solve for it. But the models do exist in the rest of the world. For example, like the Western model, which is very resource angry or uh, I'd say costly model. Uh, and then there is an India model, which is actually a, not just very frugal, but very scalable, sustainable, and dramatically impactful. So we now have another model, which is there. And when you talk about financial inclusion, we talk about formal financial system. Like the money should not be kept in your pocket or mm -hmm. in a house as a cash, but it should go in a bank account. Bank account should not be overcharging you for various things so that you don't mean that bank money keeping in the bank is a like a debt rent out there. And then finally, the money needed called credit. Mm -hmm. So these are the three stages in my opinion, and the models have been proven. The consumers who have invested in smartphone now are committing that I am committing myself. You don't need to open a branch, you don't need to open a distribution or get an assistant. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to commit to a smartphone. I'm ready to experience the banking using a smartphone. So in my opinion, the model exists, but it is up to the regulator and the country's government to drive it. And different models can come. We happily want to do, do, help the rest of the world, whichever mm -hmm. country that we are able to. Like you just talked about, Japan was a totally unexpected market for us. But it was a personal challenge I picked up because in Japan, people say that you have cash economy because most people use cash and then another challenge was that giving QR payment system to the country that the QR came in the world from mm -hmm. was a personal kick for me and uh, as an Indian I always wanted something built in a developed economy not just a developing or emerging frontier economy so Japan was special and here to the friend here I would suggest that there is a model which is called India model Paytm model UPI model whichever word that you want to metaphor on it and then there is a Western model I think India model will prevail hmm. it is far more frugal and scalable and latest in technology we answered your question, Hansel. Thank you very much. Right, who's got a question for, uh, who's got a question here in the room? Yes. This Go is ahead. a cozy gathering. Hi, hi, yes sir. I, I, so I bought a share till the time period my, complete equity could not go that I have to make an open offer. If I am allowed to, I'm here to make an open offer. So here it is for 51% owned by. <laughs> Who else in the room? Yeah, just yeah. here. We're gonna, do we have a microphone? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we need to hear your okay. name though. You've been, you've been uh, 
like kind of coming to this region for a long time, looking around, you've been to the neighboring countries. What are the plans of Paytm in the region? Where, what do you plan to do? <laughs> like you've been talking Japan, but I think uh, this is a frontier economy to talk about rather than US or for that matter, Europe. Thank you. And uh, uh, I'm made a background. I, I'm just going to say something in Hindi because mm. that is a Hindi song. So, Anahi Pada Sajna Jalim Hai Dil Ki Lagi. In other words, I'm saying that I would probably be singing a song that I had to come, I came because I had to come. So, mm -hmm. here, I think, I think uh, to the question I'm going to say that uh, when you built in India, sometimes it comes upon a generation to commit to the country of a scale that India is, that everything else seems small, even if it is commercially big or more beneficial. But I think the kind of commitment, I believe, our hard work should progress my country first. Mm. And once my country is on that path, then I'm happy to say that maybe by that time, 10 more would have learned what to do and they would have gone there, or any other market opportunity will be good for us. But our hard work, our people should serve our country first, and that is why in India first. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sir. <laughs> Here, where the microphone's going to come to you. Please say. Uh, Vijay, many people always look for investment from outside to come and save them, like uh, my dear friend Vijay. said here. What is the role of entrepreneurship in every country to take countries forward? What should countries do to promote entrepreneurship from your experience? You've seen the startup ecosystem, 100,000 startup people like you have come up. What should countries do, emerging markets country uh, do, to grow their own entrepreneurial system in the technology revolution? So. I have, sir, I had an experience of starting company. This company started way back in 2001, when India used to have tourist VCs. They will fly down, they'll give you money or may not, but they will go back. And from that day to today, I think the first thing any economy and any country should do is that it has to come from the top. We used to be the third citizen. We used to be the third citizen. First was the international company for talent addressing. So if you go to IIT, IM, or any engineering college, the first preference was international, second preference was international in India, and third preference was companies like yourself, and then we were like the fourth guy. So after the three has been served, mm -hmm. we were the last food chain people. And I want to tell you one thing, sir. The world changed for companies like us when our honorable prime minister said, this is a country that will be known as Startup India and Digital India. And that, in my opinion, was the beginning point of it. Like, just like in Hindi, line of se shuru hogi. these are the guys who are celebrated more than the, these are incumbents. So, so our prime minister called out that startups are the way this country will go mm -hmm. for. So first thing first I want to tell you is that we need the startup, the new, the change agent or the frugal or the small guy needs the celebration acknowledgement so that the rest of the government ecosystem celebrates. And second is that definitely the access to the capital. There is no secret about it that no country will grow without the access to the capital. And it could be debt capital, equity capital, whatever it is. Uh, lucky in India, again, that there was lots of foreign direct investment and that was able to come. But ultimately, it is the capital access. I rather prefer a domestic capital access over an international capital access. Second would be that so government should pave way for support of angel investment as mm. we call it in a way that it is tax free or not penalized for investing in startups and i think many governments fail on that because of they have to solve for something else so Acknowledging the startup is a way of life, access to the capital is there to solve. And third, now that point onward, they should go back. Meaning just the only two things, access to capital, access to market. Because after that, the startup or the mm -hmm. economy of these people will solve for itself. Well, so speaking as an investor yourself, you've recently launched a fund that invests in AI, in sustainability, in electric vehicles. What grade do you give India on that? I think I'm here to say that India needs next level of uh, reform in tax or various other government mm -hmm. initiatives for startup investments. Mm -hmm. And it is all because India is a billion people cohort country. Every new incentive that government of India will give, there will be some people who will abuse it. And to stop for abusing of that, every one of us will be accounted for it. So in my opinion, there is a lot that our government has done. And there is no doubt about it, lot can more be done. And I do believe that, like I said a few minutes back, 
every money, every resource of young Indians committed to India will progress India and will make an opportunity for a diverse and bigger India. Mm. And that, I think, is a, any bigger opportunity. Many of us are expat in this country, and I see the many Indian in this room. And many of us are expat out there in Western countries, whichever, US, UK, et cetera, that you know. But there is only one country that you call your country, that is India. The best success for every Indian is that India becomes a larger economy, and you're proudly saying, I'm India, because I take the cabs here from other country people who are driving, especially our neighboring country people, mm. I know that many of us know what I'm talking. And it is very uncomforting to see their pains. And I'm saying when I uncomfortable see meaning, I feel so proud that in the mm. last 10 years, our country has just leapfrogged somewhere versus somewhere it else it could have been. And that is what, in my opinion, the success of investment is. Mm. I'm for only and only investments in India. There is no other place I will ever invest, and there is no other place I would rather want my energy to be concentrated on. All right, India. all right. Who else is coming? Yes, madam, here, just here. Just, just we'll one more the, question. Oh, here, and, yeah. then, and then the lady there. Right, uh, talking about finances, how does Paytm plan to, how does Paytm plan to- um, Monetize? Sorry? Monetize? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest endless question I get. <laughs> right. How does Paytm plan to address the challenge of uh, retaining users and, and merchants, considering the impact of MDR fees on the revenues? Uh, considering that uh, the MDR fees have historically proven to uh, deter merchants, and governments have intermediately uh, forced zero percent MDR policy fees on the on MDR. How how do you plan to strategize on this? So first and foremost, I want to tell you I was the champion and I am still the champion of zero percent MDR, and we put two and a half billion dollar of equity in the market just to sustain that. That the change that you bring is not by penalizing the merchant, and it is no more sustainable. So I'm not going to say that till the time period government sustainability could come, it was not viable. But we could show the model zero percent. So. If I was to tell you, you cannot charge for your game to your game player, what is your business model you will go through? It's called freemium, meaning you'll give for free and there will be something for premium. So Paytm started a business model where we offered certain extra service, and that extra service in India is called notifications on Soundbox, where the merchant gets to hear the, what the payment was done uh, instead of just seeing an app, and there were many reasons and many different uh, reasons for that to get popular. So right now we have more than 10 million merchants paying us a dollar a month. So $10 million a month is our revenue from a subscription service to the same merchant said who otherwise does not pay any MDR. So it's a, it's a classic, I would say, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. If this is the market, you will find a way to go through the market. And freemium is the model for us. And we actually, this year, as I speak, are running on a billion dollar plus revenue on a payment plus enabling commerce combination business in India for us, which is just not unheard of for us. So here it is. There is always a model, and it is a freemium and premium model. Thank you. And by the way, I do believe in 0% till the time period majority of market has come to the digital ecosystem. And this is just a production note, by the way. I think Hansel's done a great job of looking over us. We can probably give him a rest and take him off screen. <laughs> but thank you so much, Hansel. Uh, we'll, we'll let you go. Yes, the, the lady who was just here. Um, so I'm not an investor, so please pardon the generalizations. I was here at IGF last year. And there was an uh, entire forum on uh, investment discussion. So there is the US model, which is essentially led by private um, sort of capital and institutions, educational institutions like the MIT, et cetera. Then there's a Chinese model, which is completely state-funded, geared towards national security. And then a unique model that's emerging in the UAE, which is essentially catalytic funds. So the government employs patient capital that spurs others to invest. So from your perspective, I want to understand where the domestic investment situation is in India. Who is investing in startups? Um, is it angel funds? Is it VC funds? From an Indian perspective, and which is the optimal model for us? As Indians? As, Indi as Indian startups. If yep. we want domestic yep. sort of support in that yep. sense, yep. because yep. there are very few countries in the, in the world that have created those ecosystems. So first and foremost, the Indian today or these days, angel or early days investments are coming from people who have exited. For example, like many of our peer, contemporary peers would have got some money, tens of million dollars, not less, uh, and there are many of those out there. In fact, uh, so it is uh, entrepreneur's money 
Can I say something in Hindi once again? Yes, you can. Okay, because many of you, I do not want to hear that. Make the so business में India में क्या होता है कि बड़ा आदमी दूसरे को बड़ा बनता हुआ नहीं देख सकता। लेकिन entrepreneur के अंदर, because the entrepreneur comes from this background, he wants to see more to flourish and become, you know, somebody else in the world. So, in my opinion, the new capital access that has happened in the market through the new entrepreneurs because they exited and there are many successful exits is the capital that is coming to the early stage, number one, in India. Number two, in my opinion to the question that Sir also asked a few minutes back, I think there is a fund of fund culture which is even in US if it is by the endowments who are very rich, in UAE which is government led and in India which is actually government led. In my opinion, fund of funds concept, whether it is financial institution, infrastructure institutions who have, Temasek is nothing but a fund of fund, Mubadla is nothing but a fund of fund and these all fund of fund are based on utility supplies and utility companies. Obviously in India not that kind of richness has happened but there are lots of fund and fund that could have been created. So in my opinion, Acceleration of the deployment of capital by the long-term patient's capital as a fund of fund and support by or primarily led by the entrepreneur money is a way to go forward in India. And finally, uh, I do think that model of go to public market and list yourself as a fund is a model that needs to be explored in India. And uh, th I think these three models are the models for India. So if you have your own personal access to the capital, you can co collaborate with many more to create a large fund. And that's good. Right, another production note for me. I'm going to need my timer back on here because otherwise we're going to I'm, we're going to risk taking this um, for the rest of the afternoon. I want to ask you about your take on artificial intelligence. We had His Excellency this morning, the Minister of AI, uh, giving his view: zero, one to nine being um, it's going to rule us all versus welcome our robotic overlords. He's about a five. Where are you? in terms of your fear or no. embracing of AI? So, so in uh, mathematics, there's a term called X tends to, and it does not happen towards that, but still, I have to give an answer, tends to. We are underestimating the impact of artificial intelligence-led apps and services in the world. It is literally, we have given different, different examples, sometimes electricity, sometimes internet, and sometimes smartphones. The intent that I'm trying to tell you is the common job, for example, like you are an artist, graphic designer, musician, I'm sorry, that job is done. It's no more handmade by, hand built by, no advantage. It's like, you remember the movie posters in the James Bond era used to be <laughs> handmade? Now who bothers and cares? Right. The shirts and shirts used to be made by thread that was handmade. Who bothers and cares? Mm -hmm. We are going to see industrialization of very skilled services at a mass scale, which will dramatically take over the world's need and services. It does not mean that the, the world is going through a coup where the machine is taking over. It definitely means the machine will take over. Mm. Are you worried about that? <laughs> I'm not worried about that because I'm on the other side of the table who will rule the world. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm worried about the world who is not accepting that this is going to happen. I'm definitely worried about the world. In other words, I'm going to say that some people, just like we talked about a few minutes back, big tech, imagine the influence that big tech has over the world. Mm -hmm. World's democracies are now at the mercy of a big tech. Big tech can say, your subpoena, your your notice of the court is not accepted by me, I'm sorry. And then you can't do anything. You can only do is that you can block the application in the country. Mm -hmm. Or you are not able to a, make a fair judgment of their offering in your country, like Myanmar did it for one of the large social media company in blue color, that they just gave it to them, that all of the internet is belonging to them, and then you saw the army coup. So my thing is, just like we underestimated the good thing of the big tech happening to the world and we have given in to them and now certain people who are aware are resisting it, we will obligately give in to the ability capabilities of AI in the world and that in a byproduct will definitely take away very, very skillful jobs. Mm -hmm. If we last time took an unskilled job, we right now are not talking about that level, we are talking about significant large level. So, it is an obligation. People should learn to use their time towards their own uh, certain more productive or useful thing. But same jobs are definitely not there. I run a business of commerce, and I want to share in this room. It's called ONDC, which is a commerce business model that mm -hmm. Government of India is incentivizing. It's run by four-people team because everybody writes a code or a graphics by themselves. 
I mean, the team is not just crossing 20 people because it has some operations people, which should have been in hundreds. And the reason is that the machine is literally uh, like what page should it be, not just what page. I'm going to give you an example, that image and the banner that you make, that this is a click on a fashion products. What image, fashion, et cetera, it's literally a decision and production and cut out. So I'm sorry, just like handwritten paper, the machine came and the printing was everywhere. It is exactly that stage that is happening. And anybody who's believing this is not happening, I'm sorry for those guys. You have to find a way for it. Okay, right, we're gonna end this on a lighter note. I wanna know, what, how do you stand on the three-day work week or the 70-hour work week? I'm an entrepreneur who does not work and who does not go to home. I'm a perpetually working and there is nothing called work-life balance. In my opinion, a balance is nothing but a bad or good balance. I don't know what is bad, your work or your life. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a huge round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You Thank generous. you.